You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's Semi Mount Sword of the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Sylving. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Oh. Excuse me. He pulls the baton away and the room goes dark again. And like before, the stone's normal emissive glow returns, somewhat dimmer than before Mikkel, than before Mikkel's demonstration. He pivots the shutters of the window to allow thin rays of light to breach through. He then holds the stone aloft in one such strand, and I can see the light from it is wholly absorbed into the stone. While there are countless factors that influence how the absorption process works, all that is needed is for the crystal to be exposed to the element it stores. As the mystical rock gulps down its fill, its luster grows and grows until it, ret until it returns to its original brilliance. With enough time and exposure, it will reach capacity, at which point it will not hold anymore and become inert, much like any container. I know for this one in particular it's hard to see, but this light crystal has absorbed every ounce of sunlight that, that it's shown on, and shown on it, to be released at a later date. This logic applies to all the differing elements. Though here, there, there are some discrepancies in how efficiently a stone can absorb its respective element. So a fire must be put in an actual fire, while a water stone must be submerged in water? Yes, that is correct, but there's more to it than that. See, if you place a water crystal in a container of water, it will absorb the water out, but only the water. Any other dissolved substance is left behind. This actually has an industrial application, as it can be used to gather salt from seawater or, or gather processes that require swift dehydration. That's incredible. Water stones are most commonly used to transport large quantities of potable water in a relatively small container, a potentially life-saving innovation when traveling the seas or through hot and arid lands. <sighs> Just make sure you mix in something soluble before consumption. Such distilled water can actually cause indigestion or in large enough quantities intestinal damage. I feel like the implications of such things would be world-changing. If we had these back in my world, so many issues would be resolved so easily. Hmm, yes, they are fascinating things. I've been studying them thoroughly for the past few years, and have developed a few theories on how they might work on a more fundamental level. But alas, it's not possible to progress without talking with the Udirs. They're dangerous, but they have the best understanding of this magic. I was going to ask about maybe finding a way to get the crystals to power the gates, but the mention of Udir again catches my interest. Agnar said something about Udirs before. When we first met, he asked me if I was one. What are they? Didn't I tell you about them? He digs through his notes, papers flying to and fro. He fishes out a particular piece of paper and scrutinizes it, eyes darting through the lines in disbelief. It would seem I've somehow neglected to mention the history between our forefathers, the Udirs, and the involvement of the Sylvings. Odd. It's the most defining period of our history. It was meant to be the focus of today's lecture. How did I get so led astray? He continues to rummage through his notes, trying to find where past, where past Mikhail might have betrayed him. Come on now. There you go. It's the first day of learning, and my already lean faith in his teaching skills just evaporated. Seriously? You forgot the number one most important thing you were meant to tell me? I believe Sir Agnar might have been right. That you work yourself too hard and need a break? A, a long one, maybe? What? No, the opposite. I should have done more and coordinated with him regarding your syllabus. These subjects are paramount, not only to your blending in, but also for resolving our initial predicament. Here, let me start over. It all started 600 years ago. Come on, Mikhail, please, can't we do this tomorrow? I feel like my brain is oozing out of my ears. Oh, but we must cover this today. We can't take the risk of you lacking such critical information. Everyone's been told this story since we were little cubs and kittens. You said yourself. It's the number one most important thing you should learn. No, oh, damn it, I should have kept my mouth shut until our next session. I've already used up my last of my brain cells today on those magic crystals. My mind feels like it's burning. Now, let's talk about the he- <clears throat> A heavy knock on the door interrupts him, followed by the heroic visage of Agnar stepping inside, putting Mikkel's rambling to a halt. He's carrying a big sack through the door, filled with who knows what. Ah, Sir Agnar, you're early. Is less than time over already? Agnar sets his sack down and cocks an eyebrow. His eyes darting between my distress, Mikkel's good humor, and the evening light filtering through the window. I am actually fairly late, my lord. Construction at the fairgrounds took longer than I had anticipated. Nonsense. It's not half past noon. The fox takes a gander out the window, and his cheery expression plummets. 
Herr Good, is it that late already? Oh, my brother is going to skin me alive. He immediately begins snatching up his notes from all over the table and floor, leaving many behind. He crams them and his equipment haphazardly into his bag after putting on his vest. The staging grounds are bigger and more elaborate than usual. Are we expecting more noble families coming for the event? Should I be... I'm so terribly sorry to cut our time short, but I must get back home. I'll see you tomorrow, Aaron. And remind me to purchase an hourglass the next time I visit. Another one? But don't you already have one in your... Too late. He's already out of the house, shutting the door behind him. Man, he really is just a bundle of energy when he's not sleep-deprived. I don't understand how he can talk for hours on end and then just sprint out the door like he's at an Olympic event. Apologies for the delay. I didn't think it would take so long to get back. Don't worry about it. You arrived just in, just in the nick of time. I had, had he gone on another minute, I think my brain might have sprouted legs and run for the hills. It wasn't that bad, was it? Oh, no, it was bad. Never ask Mikhail anything to do with history. He kept going without a second to even breathe. Agnar snicker, snickers in complete understanding. He can get carried away when it comes to sharing his knowledge. I think he forgets just how vast just how vast and thorough his education is compared to most. Just keep reminding him whenever you need a break. You may have noticed, but he doesn't have the best sense of time. Kidding. Thanks for the advice. I'll remember that. One of us has to. Now that your time with Lord Mikkel is done for the day, we'll go and do some training. That should help clear your mind after a tough session like that. When you're ready, we'll head out, and I'll show you to show you the grounds where we'll conduct today's lesson. I will take responsibility for teaching you how to properly use your new lion physique. Second, y'all. Water time. Come on. Yeah, one second. Come on now, game. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. All right, guys and gals, and we are back. Let's jump right back into it, shall we? Okay. When you're ready, we'll head out, and I'll show you to the grounds, where we'll, con where we'll conduct today's lesson. I will take responsibility for teaching you how to properly use your new lion physique. Great. I've been itching to stretch my legs all day. All right, then. We'll leave right away. Agnar hoists up his cargo again and holds the door open for me. I pose a question as I step out and down the steps. Oh, uh, what do you get? What do you got in the sack? Looks heavy. Just some tools and leftover supplies from the morning labors. They're actually stored where we're, where we're going, so we don't need to make any detours. The streets are bustling, as always. I look to both sides of the crowd to see if there's any room for us to slip through. Agnar's a big fella. I prefer it if he didn't have to hustle. While he's looking up, while he's looking up I take note of the big crystal hanging right beside me. The setup is just like any house light you'd see back at home, except instead of a light bulb, there's a big rock. How could I have missed this before? It's pretty big, about the size of a watermelon. Mikkel said they need time to absorb the light. If they emit all night long, then they probably need the whole day to recharge, too. Reminds me of the solar panel problem. They only charge during the day, so you need to stockpile all you can get all you can get for the following night. I actually worked with solar panels a few times at the tech store. I bet there's some new similarities between them. I bet there's some similarities between them, even if in a magic even if uh even if in a, you know, magical sort of way. As we walk down the street, a few people cast glances at me. It's not as obvious or many as before, so it's easy to just ignore them. Finally, just one of the crowd. Finally, just one of the crowd. It's astonishing how capricious public opinion can be. I get the sense it would only take a minor slip-up to wind me back up at square one. But no more of that. Today I'm getting hands-on training from the legend himself. Agnar, the fabled werewolf warrior of Dalset. I'm so excited! I think back to when I first met Mikkel and that almost unnatural speed at which he fled from me. If he could run at that speed, despite presumably being an unfit noble, then I must be able to manage the same now that I'm a deer that I'm a deer like them. But I'm a lion man, so maybe instead of primal speed, it's feline reflexes and dexterity. Can I leap like a cat? I always land on my feet? Will I be able to sprint up walls, cling from the narrowest ledges, and balance on a post like a kung fu master? They call it parkour. Right? They call it parkour, right? A superhuman lion-like parkour. It sounds like a neat superpower. I can't be happy with that. Agnar can keep the super strength for himself. No? Alrighty. Alright. I grin to myself, looking forward to whatever Agnar has planned for me. It took him all day, and some of yesterday, too. I bet it's an obstacle course. With... With, like... 
with like ro with right rolling logs suspended in water, a maze of spinning boards, a wall running section, and a field of posts that I'll have to leap over while he throws water balloons at me or something. Whatever it is, it's got to be more fun than Mikkel's endless history lesson. After crossing the bridge, we take a sudden turn to the left where the road splits in two. We're approaching a small hill, and I get the sense and our I get the sense our destination is just on the other side. My anticipation grows. I can barely contain my excitement at what's in store for me, and we clear the hill, only to be met with a janky old house on a questionable on a questionable race foundation. It's uh, it's seen better days. It doesn't look like anyone's lived here in a very long time. In complete disrepair, it looks as though one moderate, one moderate gust of wind would blow the whole thing over. Here we are. This is where we'll conduct your training. This? This actual shack that's not fit for anything but demolition? And when he said we're going to a training ground, I was at least expecting a place where the local warriors spar, or, or an archery range or something. This is just a, some hermit's backyard. Are you sure we should train here? It doesn't look all that safe of a place to do it. Yes, Aaron, I've been using this place myself for my own training in the past five years. You'll be fine as long as you don't climb inside the building. But it looks deserted. What is even supposed to be? The Bang Shack. It was a barn that was abandoned long before I arrived at the village, but it's free for anyone to use. He ducks into the space under the house and stores the sack inside, only to return with a shovel he finished, shovel he fished out from it. The farmers use it to store old or worn equipment they aren't using anymore. Anyone's free to come by and borrow what's inside. He drags the shovel across the ground, walking backwards as he marks a, marks a straight line in the dirt that is several meters long. First, we need to carefully figure out why exactly you're having so much trouble walking. I assume that you did not have issue in your previous form. Yeah, I didn't have any disabilities. Walking was easy. I wouldn't say I was the most graceful about it, but it's not like I was turning heads or falling over all the time. All right, then. Let's see what you can do. He gestures to the line, and my eyes dart from him to it and back again. Walk the full length of that line, one step in front of the other, as steadily as you can. You must be joking. No, I am not. This is where we shall start. I'm not that hopeless. I know how to walk. Your walk doesn't look natural, and more importantly, you don't look like a you don't walk like a noble should. The excuse that your illness has impaired your stance is quickly wearing thin. Everyone has seen how quickly you've recovered now. Hey, yeah, why are we telling everyone I'm a noble? Isn't that an unnecessary and risky detail? There's a number of reasons, but chief among them is that you're a lion. What does that have to do with anything? Most lions in this and the neighboring kingdoms are nobles, or have deep connections to them. Everyone assuming you are is a matter of course. Seriously? I just happen to roll the most, the most gilded species in this world? Why couldn't I be a ferret? Given your circumstances and that everyone already knew you were connected to Lord Mikkel, the only sensible choice was to make you the son of a lesser-known family of a small, faraway domain. As you must now live like a noble, you must learn to walk like one, too, and that starts with this line. I can walk in a straight line. I'm not a baby. All right, then. Show me. He scoffs as he says that. How hard could this possibly be? I confidently take my first step, round the line as I begin to trace it. But my stance is already faltering on the second step. I'm forced to lean to the right before sticking my arms out as counterbalance. After a couple seconds, I find my center. However, the tail throws my hips out with its erratic thrashing again. I'm forced to take my next step while fighting against its movements. I thought it was getting better, but sticking to an established path with my feet together is proving to be more of a challenge than I expected. The tail yanks the tail yanks me off the mark more times than I'd like to admit before I totter to the end of the line. There, see? Yes, yes, I see very well. Okay, my ego is getting more than a little bruised now. Agnar? Yes. Now what? Well, are you done? I do my best not to scowl. Done with what? I walked the line, didn't I? I'm not convinced. Do it two more times. I take a sharp inhale through my nose and huff. You didn't have to say it like that. But I do as I'm told and walk the line twice more. I try to put my arms down and will my tail to stay still, but no luck. Each attempt is worse than the last. I return to Agnar. He looks far from impressed. I can't keep up my bravado any longer. Do you feel like that went well? A sigh and scratch the back of my furry neck. I'll admit that was more difficult than I would have thought. It wasn't very good.
All right, y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank y'all if I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you for our Silver Tier patron, Kate Silver, and thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our two Gold Tier patrons, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our Night for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye